Brian Kirst joins us now to give us additional insight on this important story for both North and South America. Mike, thank you for your report and taking the time to talk. Why is Arizona such a hot spot for undocumented workers with all of the opposition there? Why don't illegal immigrants just find another spot? Well, uh, over the years, they've been moving into California, Texas, uh, and after those two states have tightened security on the borders, more and more Mexicans have started moving into Arizona. Uh, there was a huge building boom in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, in Maricopa County. 30% of the population now is, uh, is Latino, Hispanic. Uh, many families there that can provide a refuge, a safe haven for those of their loved ones trying to cross the border from Mexico to find work. Mike, tell us more about the federal lawsuits against policing policies. Who is filing these lawsuits? What is their status? And what are they after? Well, there is a, a federal lawsuit now in a federal district court in Phoenix underway. It is a, a civil rights class action lawsuit by a number of uh, individuals, Latinos, who were in the United States, in Arizona legally, whether visiting or residents. Uh, the case is called Melendrez versus Arpaio. The, the lead plaintiff in the case, Manuel Melendrez, claims that he was visiting as a tourist five years ago. Uh, he had a visa, a valid visa. He was in a vehicle with other Latinos, a vehicle driven by a white motorist. A uh, sheriff deputy from Maricopa County pulled them over, told the motorist he was speeding, and in the process he asked Melendrez and the others for identification. Now, Melendrez had offered up his visa, it was a valid visa, but apparently that wasn't good enough for the deputy who detained Melendrez and the others. They were taken to jail and detained for nine hours before federal immigration officials uh, were able to release them. And by the way, at the end of the day, the white motorist was never cited for speeding. Now, what attorneys uh, for these individuals will also claim in the lawsuit against Joe Arpaio is that he had been receiving electronic messages from people in the community that were essentially instructing him to go out and arrest people they believed to be illegal immigrants. You know, essentially saying, Sheriff Joe, go after these people. These emails, and some of them were letters, were passed on to his investigators. Um, he was, he was uh, reported to, to have told them to handle this, which is sort of a vague way of, of responding to that. But essentially, he, he, uh, he's also accused of responding to these uh, informants, if you will, these tipsters, uh, with thank you notes. Do you get the impression at all that Sheriff I Arpaio is concerned that he and his department could get prosecuted for discrimination? He seems to be holding his ground and he's quite certain that uh, in court he'll prove there is no racial profiling. And, and I just wanted to mention there is also a U.S. Justice Department lawsuit uh, in motion right now uh, that uh, is accusing uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio not only of racial profiling, but of violating the civil rights of inmates in his jails. Uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio has said uh, we, we uh, do not racial profile. He believes he's going to be reelected to a sixth four-year term as the sheriff of Maricopa County. And, and what's interesting here is 80 percent of the, the $4 million campaign war chest that he has for his reelection bid in November, which is a huge, huge... Uh, uh, campaign fund uh, for a local official like, like Arpaio, 80% um, of those funds are coming from out of state. So he's, he likes to say that he's got support from around the country, a pulse, if you will, of uh, at least a part of, of the United States that is uh, against uh, illegal immigration and want people like Joe Arpaio to do something about it. Uh, he, he seems to be undaunted by these lawsuits. Well, for our audience, what is the difference between racial profiling, as you've been describing, and D discrimination, when does it turn into discrimination? Well, many people say they're one and the same. Uh, racial profiling in its simplest form is if a, a police officer, a sheriff deputy in this case from Maricopa County, pulls somebody over, stops somebody at a traffic stop or on the street simply because uh, they look like they're Latinos, Hispanics, uh, some other ethnic origin. Mike, what does it take for an illegal immigrant to obtain a driver's license or some sort of permit. What is the paperwork involved, the paperwork process? How difficult is it for them? I think if you ask a lot of illegal immigrants in Arizona, not just Arizona, but around the United States, it, it takes a miracle. Uh, there's a lot of red tape. You need money. You need good attorneys uh, who can go in and, and push through the federal system to get a temporary federal work permit, a driver's license. Let's turn back to Sheriff Joe Arpaio once again. He came forward with claims this week that U.S. President Barack Obama's birth certificate is definitely fraudulent. What can you tell us about that? 
Uh, some say this is a smokescreen that uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio has put up to divert attention from his own legal woes. Uh, some say it's just beating a dead horse. Um, it remains to be seen how far this will, will go in the end. Okay, Mike Kirsch, thank you for your report and for your insight. Good to be with you, Elaine.